this video or topic I guess you could say I've been avoiding or thinking about overthinking for uh, the past couple of months where I currently am we'll get to that later or maybe you can figure it out and definitely for a few years uh, just because I guess I had this idea that I would uh, make some sort of compelling uh, video about you know cancer and make it this huge thing but you know I put all this pressure on myself and instead of making some kind of blockbuster monumental documentary it, uh, it's been this huge mental block um, and uh, it's been stopping me from it's been stopping me from doing what I want to do which is make videos in another country because really when I started this whole uh, YouTube experience <laughs> I was inspired by Anthony Bourdain his travels the food he ate things like this so uh, we'll get more into that a little bit later now back in the early months of 2020 uh, I was uh, you know going through obviously the uh, same thing everyone else was at the time uh, pandemic bunch of unknowns bunch of uh, you know what the F confusion uh, and then actually it was on uh, Claire's birthday sweet wonderful Claire I had this swelling right here on my neck and so Claire notices that comes over to me and says hey stand up straight well it turns out I was standing up straight but it was this massive uh, swelling on my neck so of course I did what any rational human being would do with access to the internet I diagnosed myself with everything under the Sun right and I specifically remember saying to my aunt who will say that's uh, my Uncle Dan's uh, Uncle Dan's uh, widow said well a lot you know I lost him to, to cancer and I, I, I remember saying I'll definitely myself if it's cancer so <clears throat> anyways I was in Arizona at the time and my license is out of Washington and I had no insurance and you know how the US healthcare system works so I needed to get back up there and get insured so <clears throat> anyways I got up there was paranoid walking around with a respirator and uh, first went into a walk-in clinic because I was afraid of our wonderful pre-existing condition stuff they said oh that looks pretty serious you should go to the ER so a month after noticing the swelling I uh, made it into the ER and I could tell by the look on the ER doctor's face that something was wrong something serious was wrong and uh, she kind of just referred me to the uh, oncology department and within a couple of days I got the results uh, of a large swelling on my neck then of course I started the whole process of um, you know the oncology visits the tests the biopsy you know during this time everything's racing through your mind things like you know how long do I have to live um, 
Am I gonna die? Uh, just terrible, right? It's horrible to think you're dying. And <clears throat> it just really sucks. It especially sucks when you realize that uh, this for-profit healthcare system that we have um, really values profits over people. There's a lot of people that can't get treated for things or they go broke, they lose their house. It's just, it's just, you know, we have the best doctors in the world, best medicine, everything, but uh, it's just, um, it's just sad when people can't get treatment. Anyways, so I'll go through all the stuff, you know, visit the doctors. Uh, by the way, I'm going to the ATM right now. I just figured I would just make this video and get done with it. And um, so it turned out to be something called follicular lymphoma, uh, which is non-curable. And I was given some options. And uh, close to this time, I happened to text a friend of mine that, uh, hey, me and the guys were talking about you and you know, we all appreciate what you've done. You're a wonderful human being, etc. And he followed up and said, hey, thank you. How are you? And I said, well, Kevin, I'm actually fine, except for this little cancer situation. So within a few seconds, he calls me and asks what's going on. I thought it was a bit strange uh, because he's a big deal in Hollywood. <laughs> and... Uh, I didn't know he knew so much about this. And he says, well, I don't know if you know this, but I helped raise you know, a bunch of money for cancer with this organization. And if you need anything, if you need help, first of all, you know, he said, are you okay? Do you need anything? Um, if you need to, but he said, if you need to find a doctor, you know, that's what we specialize in. That's what we help people do. And um, so I took him up on that offer ended up switching doctors to this absolute genius who is like a walking encyclopedia of knowledge. Um, a just fascinating guy. And um, so anyways, went through the whole process and I was trying to avoid chemo the whole time because I know how <clears throat> destructive and damaging it can be. The first place I went to wanted to do radiation and chemotherapy and all sorts of stuff which I wasn't really interested in once you start to learn what this stuff does you know some of it permanently damages you and it's pretty uh, pretty rough hello and um, so <clears throat> went to this second doctor dr. Okada and uh, it ended up taking something called R squared, which is rituximab and Revlimid, very expensive medicine. And uh, trying to make my way to an ATM without visual directions. And long story short, did that for several months and <clears throat> had some success. And then the vaccine came out. And of course I was pretty paranoid uh, because the medicine I was taking was very damaging my immune system so I chose to stop taking it and then of course it kind of grew back that created a whole different sort of problem and somewhere along the way I had a conversation with Dr. Okada that um, there are drug trials there are new drugs coming out to market. People are testing them. They need guinea pigs. <laughs> I was like, I will totally be a guinea pig for this. So we ended up finding, I found something on the internet called CAR T cell therapy. After him telling me about it, I found a trial. And of all places in the world, this medicine could be, it was about a two hour drive away, which I thought was fantastic. I thought it was like this uh, serendipitous moment and uh, yeah, I was pretty excited. <laughs> so I was uh, quite thrilled. And 
<clears throat> I don't know which way I'm going. I think I'm going the right way. So anyways, I go up there to Seattle, go through the whole process, all the tests, everything like this. And at the very last moment, very last test, it turned out that the cancer had mutated. So by this point, this is a, a year and some change into this whole process. And I was feeling quite defeated and uh, you know, part of me just wanted to be done with this as much as I was trying to avoid that nasty chemotherapy stuff. And so uh, then I started that whole process and let me tell you, that was brutal. It really does a number on your body. It destroys a lot of things and your hair falls out. And you know, I was really feeling like I looked pretty awful and this stuff called prednisone balloons up your face and I don't know, I just felt like I looked like I was dying or something. It's pretty bad. Um, I know I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. Now, so I did uh, five rounds of this stuff. Went back after that. So a total about six months or so after starting it to the point where they could say, okay, you're good, you're cancer free. Well, during this whole time, of like a year and a half of uh, basically pondering my existence and thinking about the purpose of life, I thought there's a couple things I wanna do. One is if I'm allowed to live more, I wanna go overseas and make videos. And <clears throat> two, is that I kind of want to put myself back together like Humpty Dumpty. And so I decided to sell everything, sold my bus, cashed out. I have the equivalent of one of those Costco totes storage containers to my name. I have this van, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but basically I have nothing. And uh, I figured, just like when I first started out on YouTube full time, I got some money in the bank and hopefully within the amount of time that I'm here, I can break even with my expenses. And then at that point I can perpetually travel. And that is the goal. That is all I wanted from life. That is, that would be the, I don't know, most incredible thing if I could do that. Um, my goals include YouTube play button, or buttons. So we'll see how that works. I wanna put one on my mom's office wall. Be really <clears throat> meaningful. And <clears throat> basically, I just have realized what I want. And so I've decided to live my life as if I have five years left. Hopefully I have many more than five, but that's the idea. That's my mindset is live as if I have five years left, not trying to manifest five years, but live as if I have five years left, do the things I really wanted to do, so next time around, when it's actually for real, when I'm at the very end of my life, I can look back and say, you know, I did some cool shit. So that's the idea. Hello. <laughs> so that's, that's the plan. That's why I'm here. I uh, hopefully can inspire some people to uh, live more simply and uh, give up those material things. Ram Ramji. <laughs> and hopefully I can inspire some of you to spend less on the Nikes, save up your cash. If, I mean, if you're a travel inclined, uh, you know, and, and, and ask yourself, what are the things I want out of life? At the end of the day, if you were to die, what would make you happy in your last moments? when you think about your own life. So, 
So for me, being here, traveling, making videos overseas, that was my only regret that I didn't do, was being overseas and making videos. I thought to myself, wow, I have I had such an amazing, fun life, but I, I, I didn't get overseas, I didn't make the videos, I didn't try all these foods, and I didn't get that play button, and also part of uh, what I want w wanted, I thought, you know, if I'm still allowed more minutes on the clock, we'll say, is that besides selling everything, coming over here and making videos, I wanna put the hair back <laughs> that I lost. So the place I'm staying is actually part of this incredible uh, hair transplant clinic. And I'm on two weeks of a hair transplant. So we're doing all those things and we're not getting run over on the road yet. So I think that's about it. I jumped over a lot of details. Uh, maybe one day we'll make some sort of uh, uh, documentary-esque type thing, but you know, it was really bothering me because I, I put a lot of thought into what I, this video, this uh, wrap up, and I'm skipping over a lot of details like these wonderful people who, Jen, Mike and Jen, who let me stay parked at their place for the duration of my cancer, the neighbors, such nice people in a small town. Um, you know, people who really, you know, uh, were quite helpful and quite uh, kind. And um, so at some point it would be nice to do that, but this video has been in my, in my way, disrupting my, myself because I'm, I'm so behind. I have so many videos to edit. And uh, I think I was, building this thing up way bigger uh, for myself than I could. And now I have no idea where I am, but it's fun. So anyways, that's, um, that's that. I'm currently in Delhi, India. I'll be here for quite a while. The goal is to find a vehicle and drive around India and uh, do some kind of uh, van life thing if possible. So I'm gonna investigate that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna catch up with some other videos and we'll jump back into the India stuff. And at some point it will be uh, kind of real time-ish. So thanks for watching. Um, remember, if you, uh, we're all gonna die. Every one of us, I don't know where I am. We're all gonna die. Try and think what would make you happy at the end of your life. If there's something you're missing, if there's something you want to complete, if there's something on your to-do list, you make sure that that thing is number one. And uh, I'm happy to have met, I think I'm at a dead end here. I'm happy to have met some very kind people who've helped me out along the way. And I've tried to uh, pay that back and pay, pay it forward. I was helping someone who was new to the country for almost a year. A very special person who I helped um, get situated and uh, provide for herself and find an apartment and uh, all that stuff. So it's it's nice to give back and uh, remember that we're all connected here. And uh, you know. And that kind of stuff will, will just warm your heart. So, uh, especially for me when I was so sad, when I was going through all this stuff, uh, the thing that helped me most get through some of these rough days was helping others. So, yeah, so anyways, maybe we'll get, someday we'll do some kind of more in-depth video. But until then, I'm back, the Jax is back. I'm in Delhi, I'm in India. Ram Ram, namaste, and we'll see you guys soon.